Johnny guys and today we're talking about the release that happened of the Team Black Sheep Tango 2. This was the long awaited controller transmitter put out by Team Black Sheep and it has been a bit of a controversial release with a lot of people. People are criticizing it, people are praising it and you know people always do that to new releases but i really wanted to make a couple of important notes um, i've been wrapped up in this tango 2 release hubbub for a while the whole two weeks meme has gotten everyone curious and team black Sheep really did take us all by surprise a couple of days ago when they said that it was coming out 2-2 two -two at 222 or something like that so Let's just cut right to the chase. It doesn't have any way to connect to anything else other than crossfire receivers. That is the thing that I wanted to talk about today. Now, one of the things that makes it so disappointing for me is that I've never used the Tango radio. It's sort of a novelty with the screen in the middle. It hasn't really been for a lot of people. I've seen a few out in the wild, usually newcomers that think it's a cool feature to have. So um, Team Black Sheep has never been one to really have or aspire to have the most popular transmitter in FPV, but um, it's really been kind of hard to get out of FR Sky Stranglehold. And in the last couple of years, um, we've all seen TBS and FR Sky kind of at each other's throats over the past few years. We've all kind of watched on the sidelines, seen that drama unfold. But a lot of us have really been turned off by FR Sky's recent moves, releasing a whole suite of radios that are not compatible with D8, their own FR Sky protocol that's used in the majority of your small crafts, all of your whoops and stuff like that. It just left a bad taste in everyone's mouth, forcing you to play in their new ACES protocol playground. Then Jumper came out of nowhere releasing the T16, and it has become the radio that so many of us love. So many of us have jumped over to in order to escape the clutches of what a lot of people are feeling is the bad taste that FR Sky is leaving in everyone's mouth. Now, Jumper really included a couple of features in there that we really never thought were that important. Um, but now a lot of us can't live without. And the number one feature that I'm talking about is the internal multi protocol module that allows you to connect to any receiver, toy grade, fly sky, FR sky, spectrum. The list goes on and on and on. I'm reviewing right now a beta FPV product a Woot product that you can buy for $45 and I would not have been able to fly it if I didn't have that multi-protocol module. It uses some weird bang yang protocol that I've never even heard of. Connected that with the jumper, no problem. So the difficulty is that Trappy actually responded to some of my comments saying, why would we ever want to propagate those terrible, disgusting uh, FR Sky protocols forward. And the thing of it is that's so tough about this is I can understand his point. I can understand his point completely. FR Sky has really negatively, negatively impacted TBS over the years and more recently, I feel, has negatively impacted the entire hobby. But why is it necessary to include those features? Well, by including multi-protocol module that talks to FR Sky protocols, you're actually not helping FR Sky, you're helping to defeat FR Sky. Because with those things in place, you can comfortably leave their ecosystem and be fully on board with TBS. That's what a lot of the people have done that have jumped on board with Jumper. And I'd be willing to even leave my jumper behind and go to TBS because getting a look at the thing, it's beautiful. It's the width of a normal transmitter. The gimbals are the right distance inwards from, you know, for where your thumbs are going to lie. It has buttons instead of switches. Well, that's sort of a controversial thing, but I can get on board with that. It has a small screen so that it doesn't use up all your battery. It has a large internal battery that's charged by USB-C. 
oh my word, all of the features that a lot of us have been wanting over the years. And the tough part is when TPS started designing this, I've heard, I think I saw um, Trappy comment in the live stream that he's been using the Tango 2 for what, over a year, year and a half or something like that. And that really tells you how long these development cycles are. So when they probably started planning this out 18 to 24 months ago, multi-protocol module just really wasn't in anyone's mind. It wasn't a uh, required feature. It wasn't necessary. Um, but in today's market, it's a feature that Jumper included almost as an afterthought. It's the cheapest, the smallest, the easiest thing to include, almost like an, a throwaway afterthought. And it's the thing that people have um, really embraced them over the most. And TBS could have done that. Now, when Trappy says, you know, we couldn't include it this late in the game. So even if six months ago, they realized, oh man, everyone's loving this multi-protocol module. They, he's right, they could not have, you know, the moles were probably already made, the boards were probably already made. It would have been too hard to include it. But it's just hard to hear that because Jumper is including those boards available for you to put into your Jumper T16 if you had one of the earlier versions that didn't come with it. And it's only 15 bucks and it's really small and it's really easy to install and it just makes that pill that much harder to swallow and so but i can also see it from team black sheep's perspective why would they want to help propagate that terrible ecosystem but it's really not you're thinking in the wrong terms when blockbuster was approached by news media when Netflix first started making waves. I'm talking about before the Netflix original series in the early 2000s. They, uh, they were asked, you know, why don't you copy more of Netflix's, you know, way that they go about do things? Why don't you copy more of their pricing? Why don't you? And they saw it as an insult. They said, why? Why should we? We can squash them like a bug at any time. In fact, they had the opportunity to purchase them for an extremely low price. I believe it was $50 million dollars. They scoffed at it, but they were starting to lose touch with what mattered most to their customer base. And I don't want that to happen with Team Black Sheep. I'm wearing the Team Black Sheep shirt right now. Um, I really admire Trappy. I really think that, you know, in a lot of ways, I always sort of see Team Black Sheep as like almost like the apple of, of, uh, of FPV. And that's what makes this so hard. Apple does those closed ecosystem decisions, you know, and they give the customers things that they didn't think about, things that, you know, and they take features away when they got rid of the home button. We all thought they were crazy, but it totally works after you use it. And so that's why I am not going to just sit on the sidelines and talk trash. I have put my money down. I have spent 200 bucks of my own money to get myself a Tango 2 and a Crossfire receiver, and I'm going to give it a try. I have had this crossfire module for what a year a year and a half and i've never you know broke down and used it because one back in the day i had the qs7s that required a mod to be able to use this and i just didn't want to bust out my radio and start modding it at the board level now trappy has said if people come out for mods come out with mods for for the Tango 2, they're not going to stop them they're not going to stop them from working they're going to allow them and somebody probably will uh, I just wish they would have included it. it would have been so easy it would have been so um, now from the sidelines we can say that it would have been so easy but it really isn't so easy because of those development timelines it takes so long um, six months ago or eight months ago even 12 months ago when the jumper started gaining popularity they couldn't have just switched and if you notice one of the great things about the Tango 2 is how small it is how easy it will fit in a bag and by even adding anything could have potentially disrupted that. So it's a hard pill to swallow, guys. In 2020, I want one radio that can do everything. That's what I want, that's what I need. I have like nine radios in my house right now. Nine. You know, the Tango 2 is gonna be the 10th. You know how many I use on a daily or weekly basis? One, one. I am living in a time where I can get away with having one radio to fly everything large or small, and that's all that I really want to be able to do. Now, why is that purpose? Why is that purpose so important? It's because 
muscle memory, guys. It's not just because of laziness. Yes, part of the reason I do that is laziness. I'm lazy, but I want my workflow to be streamlined. There's a reason why I don't use 4K in the footage for any of this channel, and that's because it disrupts the streamlined workflow that I have to be able to complete my productivity to get two to three uploads every week. 4K disrupts that. It involves more amounts of storage, you know, more render times, more difficulty editing, yada, 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 yada. Is it better? Of course it's better. Is Crossfire better? Of course it's better. Why do I not use it on a daily basis today? Because it costs more, it's longer to set up, you know, it's an extra soldering wire. There's a variety of reasons, but I'm willing to open myself up to switching over the two that. But what about my whoops? You know, don't, don't Johnny me, Trappy. Don't Johnny me. There's nothing you can say that's going to make me forget that I love my whoops. Is there? Is there? I gotta be able to have my whoops. So what does that mean? Does that mean I have to have, to have two radios to carry around? The most portable, beautiful, fully usable radio that's ever been seen in FPV can't fly the most portable crafts? What about the Team Black Sheep collaboration with a Tiny Whoop? The Tiny Whoop Nano, the Team Black Sheep Tiny Whoop Nano. How do you connect to that with the Tango 2? Now, as I've said, I'm not gonna just sit on the sidelines, guys. One is on the way to me right now, and I'm hoping that I like it. It's everything that I've ever wanted in a radio since 2015. That multi-protocol module concept is so new to us wanting that embedded in our technology that we're unwilling to live without it. It's, for me, become the primary feature that I need in any radio. You have to start with that feature going in from 2020, whereas you didn't before so you can't really fault them but i'm willing to give it a chance i'm willing to give crossfire a chance and use only crossfire if i have to if i can be convinced to abandon whoops but what i don't want to have to do is carry two radios around now i know what you're saying like well if you're going to a race you're going to a bando whatever why would you be bringing whoops with you i always do that one because i'm you know reviewing stuff so that's a special use case but two in between rounds when you're setting up the track sometimes you just want to take a little whoop around the course a little whoop around the pits see everyone how many times have you seen whoop footage through the pits at a race or on the sidelines at a bando or anywhere you always see that and so you can't most people can't fit two radios in their bag i already have a rolling cart that i carry around because i carry so many quads when the races but even i can't fit a second radio there's no way it's going to have to be one. So I'm willing to give them a chance. I've spent my own money to be able to give them a chance. I'm hoping that it can supplant my jumper. I want it to. I want to reward TBS for listening to every consideration that the hobby has ever wanted. And it's just so difficult that this new feature that's out has become so integral with the success of a transmitter going into 2020. So I hope that I'm wrong, but I've, I'm afraid that I probably, I'm not wrong, but I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is and give it a try. I hope that I can put my jumper to the side, only use the Tango 2. What do you think in the comments, guys? What are you gonna be doing? Have you purchased your Tango 2 already? Are you gonna be going all crossfire? Are you gonna just carry two radios around with you? One for each hand? Like, what are you gonna do? Again, I hope that I'm wrong. I have all the respect and admiration for Team Black Sheep and for Trappy. Um, God, it's like they've listened to so many things that that so many developments that they made in this radio are so good. It's just killing me that this one feature for me personally could be the thing that it makes it not be my primary radio and I'm only willing to have one radio. Thanks, guys.